So procedural assets are handy because you can kind of change parameters of them and create a lot of different variations without having to you know model every single asset uh, over and over and over again. This is real basic intro to procedural stuff in Houdini. Uh, and you probably need to know some of those keyboard shortcuts because I'm not going to go over all of that in depth. So real quick, uh, I'm just going to hit tab over here and type in geometry to make a geo tag. And I'm going to name this procedural mug. So I'm going to start with a line and I'm going to sweep the line and I'm just hitting tab with the mouse over this geometry window to come up with this stuff. So I'll, I'll hit tab and you'll see this menu pop up and as I start typing it'll it'll search for these and you do want to remember to make sure to to change your display flags which is a little blue thing to make sure that you're seeing uh, everything I'm also going to turn on display points so I can see these little blue points that'll be important I'm also going to show uh, point numbers which will be handy and a little bit later I'm going to be adding some some other things over here so right now we're not seeing the sweep do anything and it's because it's by default it's looking for an input shape this is a, a newer sweep if you're using i think like 18 or earlier you probably won't have this option so you'll need to wire in a, a circle but lately we've had this this option so instead of uh, second input cross sections where it's looking for something to go into this input we can just say i you know what i want a round tube and it'll go ahead and wire in our shape for us there. So pretty handy. The next thing I'm gonna do is just above the sweep, I wanna create some lines where I can attach the handles a little bit later. So I'm gonna add a carve. And the carve gets a little bit messy because it's going to cut our, our shape up and we'll deal with that here in a second. But first, I do want first U, I also want second U and I want to keep both inside and I also want to keep the outside. So we're going to keep all of this. What Carve does though is it, um, it basically cuts this up into each of these is kind of a different piece. You can see the numbers are overlapping. So these are all kind of separated out. Even if I hit a put a fuse here, that is going to, let's see, let's jump down into this. It's still not bringing all that stuff together. And that's one issue with carve is once you've carved it, it is a little bit difficult to uh, to get it to come back together. So if I even put the fuse in after the sweep, for instance, that does clean it up. Alternatively, instead of the fuse, you could also use a clean node so that will clean up our overlaps and everything. But that should be fine for now. I'm gonna pop back up to my carve because I do wanna have an extra division there. I just wanna keep the the geometry kind of even, so I want to add that extra division right there. And that should be good. So the next thing I want to do is I want to group on this, this line after we've carved it. Actually, I do, I'm going to need an extra fuse here as well. I'm going to fuse this both before and after. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to need this extra fuse just so that I can group these uh, because I'm going to want to be able to use one and three as anchor points to put my handle a little bit later. So to group those, I'm just going to do a group by range. And we can use that to establish a pattern for our points. So for the name of this group, I'm gonna call this handle points. So handle underscore PTS. And for the group type, that's gonna to need to be points, obviously. And if we, Go over here, this little square in a circle looking thing, we can display our group attribute list. And this just lets me uh, see in points. I wanna be able to see what's actually grouped. So right now nothing is grouped. A couple of ways that I can do this. So first I also need to make sure that that's visible. Okay, so it's grouping everything here. We can see our handle points group. I don't want everything though. I only want one and three. So there's a couple of different ways I could do that. I could bring in top and the bottom, but now I'm getting all of those. So if I, you know, start on on one instead of zero and end uh, on three instead of four, that would be one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to select one of every two, 
So now we've got one of two, and that does skip one, but we're, we're getting the wrong point. So all I need to do here is offset this. So if I offset by one, now we're gonna get one and three, so perfect. That's all we need to do there. If we go back down into Fuse, we can see that we've actually got those points are still in groups. And what we'll do now is go ahead and do a group promote. And the group promote will let us take that group of points that we just got. So we want our, actually we can just use the drop down to our handle points. And we're gonna convert this from points to edges. And we'll call this handle underscore edge or EDG to keep it short. You'll notice it's getting all this extra geometry though. We don't want all that. So we're gonna keep only the stuff that's included on the, the boundary. So now we just get those little rings there. Very nice. And next, I know it doesn't look very much like a cup just yet, but next uh, we're gonna start working on the inside of this. And we're gonna start to kind of separate this this out, the, our inside and our outside. So I'm gonna kind of branch this over. So that's gonna become one set of nodes and then this is gonna become another set of nodes. Or actually, I let's go ahead and bring the fuse. There we go. So all this stuff will be one part and then the group promote will start on a, a separate part here. So what I'm gonna do here is just do a poly extrude And I'm gonna go ahead and wire that in there. And the poly extrude, I'm actually going to extrude inwards. So what we've got right now, that's gonna be our outside. And what the poly extrude is gonna create is the inside. So I'm just gonna extrude that in a little bit. That's probably good, about like that. Perfect. So there's our, our poly extrude. And what we're gonna do later is we're gonna merge all this stuff back together and then we'll do another fuse at the end so that will create this nice solid tube for us one thing that we do want to do uh, before we we fill this in though is we want to uh, create a, a bottom before we do the poly extrude and that will actually become kind of part of our main stream here so i'm going to add a polyfill There, and I'll go ahead and wire that guy in just below it. So our polyfill is going to go there. Polyfill goes there on the bottom, which is nice, but we do want to go ahead and get rid of the top of that. So before we do our poly extrude, I'm just going to add a clip in here. And what clip will do is just cut, basically cut everything off. So if we view the clip, the clip is going to originate at the zero point. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. We can keep primitives above the plane. I'm going to change that to keep them below the plane. And then I'm just going to arrange, uh, raise the, the origin. I could raise the distance, um, but I find the origin is a little easier because I want to keep this procedural. And what I'm going to do is just in the origin, I'm going to use the height of whatever comes into this. So in this case, it's the, the polyfill. However large this geometry is right here, is going to use that value to place the clip node. Right now, we can't see anything. I'm going to hit enter. We can see where the clip is placed. Right now, it's at 0, 0, 0. To get it to go where I want it, I'm going to change this. I'm going to use a little expression to do that. Uh, and we're going to use the bounding box. So B, B, O, X, or B box. And first, it gives us this, this little um, pop-up some information of you know how this is used. And our usage is B box, and then we need to put in our surface node, what we're looking at, and then the type, or basically what parameter we want to use from that. In this case, the surface node, I'm not actually going to name one. I'm just going to use the input number. And the input always starts with zero. So we're going to use input zero, comma, and then what property I want is the D underscore Y size. So that's y is in the vertical axis, and we want the size of that. So when I click off of that, 
You see, it's going to push, put our uh, clip way up there at the top, and then we can just use the distance. We want to make sure that the distance cuts that little top bit off right there. So we can use the distance to kind of adjust where that cuts. So perfect. Now, if we go into our poly extrude, when we look at that, what we get there, very nice. And then when we merge everything back together, oh, I'm sorry, this uh, the group promote actually needs to come in under the clip. There we go. So very nice. One issue that we do have is the, the inside of this is uh, reversed. So we're going to go ahead and do a reverse so that our uh, polygons are facing the right way. There we go. So now all of our, our polygons are going the right way. I'm also going to go ahead and while we're here, I'm going to change this polyfill. Uh, right now, this is not necessarily going to work in every case. So for the polyfill, I'm going to change this from quads to a triangle fan. And I'm just going to get rid of the uh, this deform patch here. We could uh, also add an edge loop just to kind of give it a little bit more geometry. And that, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll leave that there. That looks fine. We might deform the patch to kind of bring this in, but that looks pretty good so far. Gives us a, a decent amount of geometry there. And a pretty good mug so far. So we've got the inside, we've got the outside. All we need to do now is set up our handles. And that's probably the most difficult or most complicated part of this because we want this to work no matter how many sides this has. Right now, this is really, really low poly. If I went into sweep though, and we added more columns, we wanna make sure that it can still, you know, place that handle correctly. And as the number of columns changes, uh, that could kind of mess things up, obviously. So if we had it going from like 81 to 101, that would work fine. But then what if we change these numbers? And now instead it's 89 and 111. We also have kind of different angles here. So what I'm ultimately going to try to do is turn these into first split these loops so that they've got a little bit of, of height and uh, basically create a ring of polygons here. And second, what I'm going to try to do is make sure that it's it's always kind of connected to this base. You'll notice as I add geometry, all of the, the directions, all the different axes here for uh, Z and X, the points will kind of move around. So if we use X in this axis, for instance, those points don't stay in the same place. It's kind of hard to create, you know, if we're using like normals or directionality to pick which face we want to keep, it's kind of hard to do that from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to use here, and this is in the positive Z axis. You'll notice that's kind of the origin of our circle. Our, our points always stay rooted right there. They don't move at all. So that's going to be kind of where we're, we're going to anchor from. And in some cases, we're going to end up with two polygons. In some cases, we're going to end up with just one. And I'm going to try to, to make it favor just one side there. So what we'll do with our group promote here, we've got our, our lines. I'm just going to do a poly bevel. If I can type it in, right? P-O-L-Y-B to poly bevel. And poly bevel, I'm going to go ahead and use, let's delete all this stuff in the group. The group, I'm just going to use the, the handle edges that we got before. I'll give us a little bit of distance. We can adjust that later if we need to. And that's pretty much it. We just need to uh, kind of give it a couple of, of anchors where it can grab onto these polygons. And what we're going to do is, is bridge them. So we've got this group, we've got our handle edges, but we also need to kind of refine that so that we're only getting these kind of one, like one polygon here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a group. We do a lot of grouping and procedural modeling. And just by default, it's going to group everything. We're getting primitives, which is fine. I'm going to turn off the base group though. We don't need that. And I'm also going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep the base group, but our base group 
is going to be needs to be these uh, rings that we created. We actually don't need a separate group for that. We can just use our, our poly bevel. So our edge fillet polys, if we leave that on, should give us, oh, let me go into primitives so I can see what we've got. So our edge fillet polys will give us the, the group we need. In group one, I'm gonna call this uh, handle polys. And we'll use the base group. Oops, yeah, our edge fillet polys, that's our base group. But what we want to do is we want to kind of narrow this down. So we're going to use this group node to include by normals or keep by normals. We're going to get rid of everything that doesn't face a certain direction. The way this works is a little bit confusing. If we think about a circle, typically we're used to using degrees and they're kind of using both degrees and radians here. And so it can be a little bit confusing in terms of how do I pick you know, which, which polygon I want to keep. It would be a lot simpler to, to have, you know, which direction and degrees, um, and then also have our spread angle uh, in degrees. But it wouldn't let us do things in three dimensions, which radians, this kind of gives us an, an interface here. We've got our, our three values for x, y, and z that let us pick a, a direction in three dimensions rather than just two, if that makes sense. So. In this case, I'm just gonna bring my spread angle way down here. And we can kind of see what it's doing with the spread angle if I rotate around a little bit. Right now, it's only using positive one in the, the Z axis. That's kind of the default. So if we look at our numbers here in blue, that's going in the Z axis. So it's keeping, keeping anything as in positive one Z. And our spread angle, if I crank this way up to like 90, it's going to keep everything basically facing that direction. If I crank it way up to 180, it's going to go everything all the way around. And it's essentially doing this in kind of in, in one direction. We're doing positive Y and then as we increase, it's it's just growing that uh, that spread angle. If, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the spread angle a little bit. So we'll say there. So we've just got those two. And I started increasing my x-axis. So we get, so we've got positive one x and then we've got positive one z over there. And I'll say, all right, so I want one x and one z. What it's going to do is, is basically just divide evenly between those two. So now if I increase the spread angle, it's growing from, it's kind of a, a 45 degree angle over here. So we're not using Y in this case, so this makes things a little more complicated or needlessly complicated for us. But in other situations, this can be kind of handy because you can also do this in the Y axis. We're not gonna worry about that for now though. And what I'm gonna do is just leave the Z axis positive one. And we'll start with zero for the X axis. Let's bring our spread angle down a little bit. My concern though, is that if we've got two polygons, like this is a pretty low poly model so far, and if we end up with two, it's gonna look a little bit wonky. So right now, by just leaving it in positive one, we're getting an edge right here, and we don't want that. We want it to, we wanna to try to favor uh, one of these polygons off to the side a little bit. And the way I'm gonna do that is just add like 0.1 to the x-axis, so it just kinda of offsets it a little bit. Then what, if we need to, we can adjust the spread angle and you can see it's it's gonna start by going to the left and then it's gonna go to the right and then the left and then the right. So if we go up here to our sweep node and increase the number of columns and then back down here, we see our spread angle. We can really quickly add to this and we can kind of control how wide our handle is by just using our spread angle. And we can make sure that we always have the option to go down to just one polygon. So with that said, all we need to do now is bridge them. So I'm gonna hit tab and hit poly bridge. Just kind of chunk that onto there. So for our poly bridge, we do need to get a little bit more specific with our uh, 
our points. One way to do this is that uh, first I'm going to actually after our clip with our group promote, I'm going to go ahead and do a blast so we can kind of reduce the amount of stuff that we've got here. Because we want to reduce it down to just the, the polygons that we're going to be actually using here. Oops, sorry, where am I putting that? I, yeah, I can actually go ahead and just blast right there. So with blast, I'm going to use our polygons that we, uh, our handle polys right there. And I'm going to just option drag or alt drag a copy over. So basically what we're doing is we're cutting those out right there. And then with this blast, this is, since I did a copy, I option or alt dragged it over here. It's still got the group name, uh, although the settings are still the same. So we've just, you know, created a direct copy of that. But what I'm going to do is do delete non-selected instead. So that when now we've got just those polygons. Now we don't need to worry so much about, you know, which one is going where. We just need to worry about kind of uh, grouping just those those polygons without uh, anything else getting in the way. So let's wire our poly bridge over to there. I'm going to go ahead and add a merge back into this. So our poly bridge will kind of come back together for us. Created kind of a mess here. Let's, oops. So I'm just going to hold shift and drag. If you hold shift and drag, it'll drag all of the, the nodes above it up. So there we go. We've got that, I think. Oh, there. That's our problem right there. We've got that uh, fused together twice. So this is just going to join us back to the rings. And then this is going to create our handles for us. So the way we're going to do this is using a group. Um, in a box or a group um, with a, a selection area. So I'll add another group node. And this one we're going to call this handle base. And this would work if we if we only had the one polygon, this it would always work to just use, say like polygon one and polygon two, but sometimes we might have four or six polygons. So we need to do this. We need to group them all together. Just to illustrate that, I'll go ahead and on our uh, sweep, add some extra columns or kind of get to a point where we've got multiple columns included here. I guess our, uh... <laughs> there we go. We just need to bring our angle up a little bit. There we go. So we've got the, the extra polygon. There we go. So in, in this case where we've got four polygons, we would need to, uh, we would need to do this. So with our handle base, what I'm going to do is just, um, we can get rid of that base group and I'm going to do keep in bounding regions. And our bounding box right now is just, it's all set to one in terms of size. I don't really care about the X and the Y size as long as it's large enough to fill the in, entire cup is fine. Uh, mostly I care about the, the height and I want to make sure that it's not kind of overlapping both of these if we got like a really short cup or something. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the uh, height of this in our Y axis. I'm going to do B box and again input zero. So Rather than naming it, just whatever happens to be coming into this, uh, I'm going to set the B box. And for the parameter, we want the Y size. I'm going to do Y underscore, or I'm sorry, the D underscore Y size. So D underscore Y size. And it's basically just going to take the height of this and make sure that it's, it's not... Uh, not overlapping this stuff. The other thing I want to do is take the center. Um, oh, and actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide that by two. We can just keep that a little smaller, make sure if our, our uh, cup gets bigger, um, 
we never end up with these overlapping. The second thing though I want to do is with our center. So this is the origin where the, the box is placed right now. It's at zero, zero, zero. So it's right there at the center of our world. What I'm going to do here is use the uh, B box again. And again, zero comma, and this is going to be D underscore Y min. So this is going to be the lowest, the smallest value of our Y axis. So it's basically just going to place it right there at the, the very bottom edge of that bottom polygon. So however big this is with those all four polygons included, it'll make it exactly half of that size and place it at the bottom. The same thing uh, for the next set will apply, except I'll make that, I'll just uh, push it up towards the top. The only thing else I want to do here is I want to make sure the X and Y are large enough to include everything. So I'm going to set this to B box. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this stuff, and C, and V, instead of Y size, I'm going to set this to X, and instead of divided by 2, I'm going to set it to multiplied by 2, so that I always, it's always going to be twice as big as, as however my polygon selection is. So we'll copy that. There we go. Got a nice big box there. And I'm going to do the same thing here. But now instead of X size, I'm just going to do Z size. So we've got this. Oh, <laughs> except now it's uh, way too far back. So Z size, we'll just say um, plus plus two. That should be really, really big. You should get lots of of stuff there. So uh, lots of room. I can't envision making a, a cup that's going to fall outside of that because it should all pretty much uh, follow us here. So next, what I need to do is just duplicate this. So I'm going to option, click, and drag. Same thing, we're going to drop this down. Instead of handle base one, I'm going to call this handle end. And here, uh, instead of being at y min, this is going to be at y max. And that will create a box up here at the top. So now we've got two groups. We've got a handle end and a handle um, base. And when we go into polybridge, we can use those groups to tell it where we want to start and where we want to end our handle. So our group, our group one is going to be our handle base. And our group two, our destination, is going to be our handle end. So now we've got our nice little handle right here. And if we look at everything merged back together, we've got kind of the, the basis for our cup here. So now we can start kind of messing around with these uh, parameters to change the size of it. So if I go back up here into sweep, and increase the radius. See, we still have our our handle there. So I think on the radius, I'm going to call this like 0.5 or point, uh, yeah, 0.5. That's a good radius. 0.5. I think for the poly extrude for our interior, we can go ahead and bring that down a little bit. We can make that a little bit thicker. It's quite nice. Oops. Let's actually bring this in even more. There we go, because we can we can round this out with it a bit as well. Our handle's looking a little bit wonky, so this is one of those situations where we need to um, mess around with our group spread angle here. So we'll probably reduce that spread angle down, so we've just got the, the one. If I go back up to my uh, sweep and I increase the column, say we do 16 columns instead. So now we've got we're kind of back to having that like weird thick looking handle. But if I go back to my spread angle, we can just reduce that or increase it. I'm gonna, it looks like we've got a little bit of a problem here. If we reduce it too much, it's going inside. So our handle is kind of coming through the inside, which is a little weird. So we'll need to address that in our uh, poly bridge 
One thing that with Polybridge is it does auto using loop normal. If we look at this, it's like it's reversed for some reason. I haven't figured out why it's doing that because our, our loop normal is obviously going out towards the front. So I don't know why it's going in here. It obviously knows what it's supposed to be doing down there. So I'm not really sure. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to just turn off reverse winding there and turn it on at the end. As we change these, we might need to change this to a long instead of doing a auto because auto sometimes picks the wrong thing. So if we do reverse winding and keep it along, that should work fine. I'm just going to increase the, the magnitude of my destination and start a little bit. So there we go. And that should be fine. That's pretty good. So let's go back to our merge. We've got everything merged together. So this is looking very blocky right now, which is okay. We can go in and, and mess with all this stuff. One thing that we can also do here uh, is with our spine, we can add some divisions to this. If we want to add divisions, instead of doing uniform, we can also do curvature sensitive, which is nice because then it'll, it'll add more just here where we need it along that curve, but then we don't have too much where it's not uh, not helping us. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to kind of round this out. So I'm going to add a subdivide. There we go, subdivide. And our subdivision is looking a little chunky here. So one thing that I'm going to do is just to add a bevel on all of the, the hardest edges just to kind of give it a little bit of extra geometry to work with. So I'm going to add a, a group. Let's do this after our fuse. So add the, the group just there. We'll call this, uh, I don't know, round edges. And instead of doing a base group, I'm just going to do include by edges. We want to make sure we're grouping. Uh, we want to make sure we're grouping edges here. And let's go back to this. So we're looking at that, that edge. What I want to do is just kind of select all of the edges that are like these really hard angles. So I'm going to set my, um, oops, sorry, not min, max edge angle. And kind of bring this up so that we, I'm sorry, yeah, I want to use the minimum edge angle. So we need to have, say, at least a 90 degree angle is going to get the top and the bottom. And we would almost get this stuff. So I just need to bring it down a little bit more. There we go. So that we're also getting, oops, seemed like it still didn't. Quite get those. Let me go into uh, edges so we can see this a little better. Yeah, we've got those. Well, let's go ahead and, and poly bevel it and see if we're actually getting that. Sometimes it's a little hard to see our groups. So I'm going to do poly bevel and add that just there. And for our groups, we're going to set that to round edge. There we go. Okay, so it is getting those. It's just we couldn't actually see them, but it is getting those. Perfect. So I'm just going to bring the distance out a tiny little bit. We don't want a whole lot here. And we can adjust the way this is uh, sliding. So you can see it's creating these triangles right here. So instead of slide on edges, we'll do always. This is going to create n-gons up here though. So it kind of depends what you want to do. When we go to do our subdivision though, that's ultimately what, what we want to go by. Because once we do the subdivision, that's going to give us our, our finalized uh, geometry and it's going to clean up that, that issue there. So we'll look at that. I'm going to go back to poly bevel. Just kind of 
adjust this. Instead of round, we can do a solid or crease. That's not really going to change anything after we do the, the uh, subdivide. At least not much, but... Uh, okay. And then we can add subdivisions if we wanted to, if we wanted to control that that roundness a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and turn off all of these displays here so we can see this a little better. And that's looking all right. So if we cranked up our, our subdivision, we'd probably get rid of that. But, you know, we can take this, basically just create a, a bunch of different assets, um, you know, with different heights and with bend deformers and things like that. Um, and then just you know tweak anything that we need and just kind of drag a few points around. But this kind of gives us our, our basic mesh really, really quickly. And we can go in here and like adjust, say the, the sweep. We can adjust our radius. If we wanted like a thinner, taller coffee cup, we can do that. We can also use our carve here. So we can use our first U. We can bring that up a little bit, our second U and bring that up a little bit. So our our handle is a little bit further up. So that's a quick, simple look at how to create a procedural asset in Houdini. I'm gonna set my sweep back down to, uh, let's set it up to like 32 columns and a radius to like five. And that's our basic big coffee cup. I hope you found that helpful did leave a like and subscribe and we'll have some more stuff coming soon. Bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful and you'd like to support the channel or if you'd like to find the project file used in this tutorial, head over to grayj.xyz where you can download this uh, project file as well as find merch and other items from creators around the world. Thanks, have a great day.